I guess you could say we opened Pandora's box. We've been alluding to upgrading the TT's turbo for a long time now, but last week we took the first actionable step. All the pieces are here, so what we did was dry fit them together to make sure that we didn't have to take the car apart for no real reason. And a result of that was that we now know that our turbo kit fits together, but we don't really know if it'll fit on the car yet. And there's actually a little bit we have to do before that's even a possibility, since after all, the car's fully put together now. And this job might just get a little messier than last week, but I think at the very end, it's going to be well worth it. So I think it's about time we get this car ready for the turbo swap. I arrived to the car this week with a ton of ambition. A turbo swap isn't exactly a simple thing to do, but when you've spent weeks researching and prepping the steps for this, you have a rough idea of how things should go, in an ideal world under ideal condition. But that's right about where reality sets in. The world isn't ideal. Since this is a custom swap and not exactly something that I've done before, we're gonna take it a little bit slower. The only real goal I had coming into today was to get the car as prepped as I could to install the new turbo. I had no real intention to finish this today or anything like that. All I wanted to do was make some progress. And the first step towards that is to get the car in the air. I'd like to have access to all the bolts surrounding the manifold and the turbo from both the top and bottom. So I'm putting the front of the car on jack stands and taking off the wheels. We're gonna be taking off a lot of hardware for this swap to actually work, so being organized is going to be pretty important. It's not terribly difficult to remember where bolts came from when you took them off, but that doesn't mean you can't make it easier on yourself. So what I like to do is if I'm removing a part, I keep the bolts that install that part with that part in a little bag or something like that. It's a pretty simple way to do it, but it works wonders. While I had the wheels off, I figured I'd take a detour already. The past couple weeks driving this car, I've noticed a wonderful rattling noise every time that I turned, specifically on the driver's side. Normally, something like this would be rather difficult to diagnose, but in my case, I knew what it was pretty much the second I heard the sound. Looks like the end links worked themselves loose. With that fixed though, we can move on to actually starting this swap. And since the OEM turbo is cooled by both oil and coolant, we need to drain both of those systems, starting with the oil which is an incredibly easy step, however, has a very high mess potential. And if you thought the oil was easy to drain, the coolant is somehow easier. Just like the oil, you unscrew the cap in the reservoir and then you go under the car. This time you're gonna look on the driver's side of the radiator for this little nozzle. It's got a little knob on the end and if you turn it, it functions like a faucet, bringing us one step closer to the swap. But how are we going to know if upgrading the turbo actually benefits this car? That's a good point. It would be nice if we had a way to compare the results before and after. I mean, if only we'd gotten some metrics before tearing everything apart. It turns out a couple days before this, I did go get some metrics, or at least try my best. Now this day's a little atypical. There are wildfires close enough to where I live that it is literally raining ash. A very strange and sad thing to see. It's almost like a different version of the world I typically see. One where your max visibility is on the order of a couple hundred feet. But the weirdest thing is the lack of people. Roads you drive on that are typically busy, now being completely empty. Which, now that I think about it, might actually help us get these metrics. The plan was to measure how this car actually performs. The roads are empty and nobody is out here. So we should be able to test acceleration pretty well. 
Now, I don't have access to a dyno or anything like that, but I do have access to a new OBD2 scanner, which might help us. I currently use a Harbor Freight Special for diagnosis, and this is a notable upgrade from Topdon. And one of the cool things it says that it can do is measure acceleration. So I figured I'd come out here and give it a try. At least that was the plan. Another cool thing about this scanner is that it can actually talk to a number of systems in the car that my Harbor Freight one can't. It can actually read ABS or Heldex codes, which is pretty sweet and might be useful in the future. But for now, all I was really concerned with was its ability to measure 0 to 60. Even if it wasn't super accurate, we'd at least have a benchmark. Only one real issue. At this point, the turbo was quite unhappy. The car was unhappy. I think we honestly just waited a little too long to do this test accurately. The car's boost is inconsistent. It'll sometimes peak at 20, it'll sometimes peak at 15, and it's hard to predict what it's going to do. It also absolutely doesn't hold whatever it's peaking at. So performance-wise, acceleration just doesn't feel good. All that to really say that the scanner 0 to 60 did work. It's just that the car was comically unhappy doing it. The car has a stock clutch, so I couldn't really launch it, and it's not very happy in boost. So the average time I was getting was around mid to high 6 seconds, which is pretty bad considering it's bolt-on. In fact, I think that's worse than what the car is supposed to do stock. But like I said, it's hurting, and it gives us a lot of room to improve. I also figured that it would be good to get a baseline of the codes the car was throwing before we went too far. And with what little time I've spent with this scanner, it's definitely an upgrade, and I can recommend it. Well, it turns out we actually have three codes for the check engine light, and honestly, I'm not too worried about all of them because they're all somewhat related. The first one has to do with under boosting, and well, our turbo is dying, so that's exactly why we're replacing it. Not worried there. Second one has to do with our secondary air injection system, and it looks like it's not getting the proper reading. Once again, with the setup that we're going with, I'm not that worried there. We might even replace that entire system or swap it all together. And the third one is simply for the catalytic converter. We have a high flow cat, and that usually causes a check engine light. That's true in this case as well. So. All in all, all three codes are really not that bad. We'll know that we did the swap properly if afterwards we do those scans again and fixed a couple. That's the goal. Which brings us to now. Working on a car that is hurt so bad that it is slower than it was stock, despite having thousands of dollars of modifications already. But since all those issues hinge around the turbo, we have everything we need to fix this. We just need to get access. And on this car, there are a number of things in the way. Vacuum lines, charge piping, intake, turbo inlet pipe, the list goes on. And since the turbo is on the back of the engine, everything that is in the way needs to come off, starting with our intake system. And on the topic of the intake, I don't even know how much of this we're going to be reusing. Our turbo setup is going to be completely different, so there's a good chance that we'll be re-engineering and rebuilding a ton of this. And the exact same thing could be said about this charge pipe that goes across the engine. Our turbo is going to be in a different position, and it's a different size. So I definitely wouldn't be surprised if we had to make a bespoke version of this that connects to this piping. It doesn't necessarily matter what the pipe looks like or how it's shaped, it more so just matters matters that it meets up right here. And since this hose is right now the only way to get into the intake side of the engine, I'm gonna put a glove over it so that nothing gets in. I don't really know how long this swap is gonna take. With that out of the way, we can move our sights over to the intake side again. We're going to have to remove this turbo inlet pipe since we have no real use for it anymore. It's way too small for the turbo we have. But before we can really remove it, we need to move all the lines connected to the oil catch can. And that part is likely going to stay.
With all the lines for the catch can sorted, we can move on to the back of the engine again. And right now, our goal is effectively just to give ourselves as much clearance as we possibly can. Almost all the work we're going to be doing will be back here, and a lot of it will be blind. But the biggest issue is actually the clearance. To even entertain the idea of fitting my arms back there, I need to remove the strut brace as well as the little bracket on the back. Then I can at least start to get tools down there. And if you remove the little silicone outlet from the turbo, you can actually see the manifold now. This is kind of where we're gonna be working for a good percentage of this job. So we might as well get comfortable with what's here. We have three bolts that hold the turbo to the manifold, all of which with a terrible reputation. To start this job though, there's actually another prerequisite some more tools. To even consider removing those bolts, you need to have reverse Torx bits. And honestly, even if you have these and are using the right stuff, things can definitely still go wrong. But we'll talk about that later. With all this added clearance, we can reach down behind the turbo and disconnect the hose clamp at the bottom of the turbo inlet pipe. It's one of those jobs that you just have to feel. You can't really see it, but it is there. And with that, that means we can simply pull the turbo inlet pipe out. And with this out of the way, we have a lot more clearance. Now, at this point, you might be wondering how I plan to remember to reinstall everything. And that is where this white tape comes in. Any connection that I wanted to ensure I wouldn't forget about, I threw some white tape on. That way, when I'm starting to button everything up down the line, I can remember to just check for the white tape. A lot of the hoses and connections are the same color, so it would be pretty easy to just forget about them if you didn't look for something like this. I'm not too sure if my idea will work quite yet, but I'm thinking it'll at least get me a little closer to not forgetting anything. With that though, we can start the really awful part of the job. Now this part may not be too terrible for you, but for me, nothing went as planned. We need to remove the turbo from the manifold. And to do that, we need to remove the three bolts on top that connect the two. One of them is a security bolt and the other two are reverse torques. And like I mentioned earlier, these bolts have a bit of a reputation. Generally, if they have never been removed before and your car is high mileage, they are either seized beyond removal, or they're going to round off. The latter of which happened to me. Even though these bolts had been soaking in penetrating oil for a week now, and with the correct socket, the first time I applied any little bit of torque, the entire head rounded off. Weirdly enough, the spline bolt came out though. So we're gonna have to figure something out about this, but that doesn't mean we can't make any more progress. One other thing we need to remove is the downpipe from the back of the turbo, and it's held on with three nuts. Now, you would think that since I have an aftermarket downpipe, this would be rather easy. The hardware should be relatively new. Well, as it would turn out, that is also not the case. These were also seized. Plus, we were working completely blind. I had to set the wrench in position from the bottom of the car and then move it from the top. Eventually though, there was a little bit of hope. The first of the downpipe bolts came out, although not in the typical way. Turns out the nut actually pulled the stud out of the turbo rather than coming off itself. A little weird. At this point, I switched back up to the top of the manifold to relieve a little bit of frustration. I tried some hammer-on bolt extractors to get this a little bit better, but it didn't actually do anything different. It didn't really seem like these did anything, to be honest. The top of the bolt was just as round as it was before, and these didn't really grip anything. So I'm gonna do a little bit of research and see if I can come up with a way we can get these out. Or at the very, very worst case, we can simply chop the heads off of them. Remember, we don't necessarily need to salvage the bolts, all we really care about is being able to drop the turbo out of the manifold, and the manifold portion isn't threaded. Either way, looks like those bolts are going to be stuck for the rest of the week. So I figured I'd move over to bolts that I actually could remove, namely the ones attached to the downpipe. The bottom two are actually easier to get to, and believe it or not, they came off a little bit easier too. Really, the issue here is clearance. So very often I was using wrenches and going an eighth of a turn at a time. But progress is progress, and with a little persistence, both of them ended up coming off, meaning the downpipe itself was free. Since they were seized though, it took about six or seven times longer than it really should have. We did get it disconnected though, which is awesome because now the downpipe side is free. I also removed the exhaust clamp holding the bottom of the downpipe to the exhaust. So at this point, it's really just sitting there. I'm not, however, going to pull it completely out. And that's entirely because when we're test fitting the rest of the turbo kit, we need this in place to know how we need to modify it. 
Now, my initial plan for today was to get a little further than this, but cars are always unpredictable, and these two bolts are pure evil. Reverse torques didn't hold on, neither did those bite in hammer socket things. So we're gonna have to figure out something. If you have any ideas, definitely let me know. From what I've seen online, I'm absolutely not the only one who's having issues with these. I'm out of time for today, but we definitely made a lot of progress. Two of the manifold bolts ended up rounding off, and that's pretty common from what I've seen online. So I need to go get a bolt extraction kit and do a little research to see how people usually remove those. That's kind of the big holdup right now. I do have a couple ideas for how to remove these, and we'll start the next episode by trying those. Like I said, I'm not going to try forever to remove them if I don't have to, though. So past a point, if we're wasting way too much time, I'll just cut the tops off. A little annoying, though. Either way though, we made a lot of progress today. We figured out a decent idea of where the car was before doing any work, and we're already to the point where we have access to the turbo, and we just have a couple bolts before the OEM one comes out. Should be a ton of fun. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing for more. That's the best way you can help support me and my channel right now. Either way, I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you again, have a wonderful day.